Welcome to another edition of Web Authoring with HTML using Bootstrap. I am Professor Francis Piskey, and let's get started. So in this specific uh, course or class, lecture if you will, we're going to talk about cards. Now, cards, just like the nav bar, is a component that we can use in Bootstrap. That component is derived or created from using HTML elements. Everything that we use in Bootstrap, like I said in earlier lectures, is a wrapped HTML element or elements that allow us to do certain things that would take a lot more code otherwise, but that Bootstrap wraps for us and allows us to use in a specific way. If you would like to join along, I would say uh, go to the Bootstrap website. Um, 5.0, 5 5.2 is fine. And let's talk about cards, all right? So first and foremost, cards look a certain way, right? Normally they have what's called an image cap that starts at the top, and then uh, a card body, and then the card footer. Now right now what you're looking at here is not necessarily the whole kit and caboodle. We're looking at parts of the card because you don't have to build the whole card individually. So I'm gonna go over to the code really fast and I wanna build cards with you right now that you might um, wanna be familiar with as we develop in this course. First things first, we don't wanna build cards in our header. Our header is where our mast and nav bar are. So we wanna create another element to group all of the elements we want in our body of the page. Now I know we are in the body, but when I say body, I mean the main part of our page. So with that being said, let's write that right now. So I'm gonna make a, um, I'm gonna write the element main and I'm going to tell the main that I want it to be a container because I want the same spacing that I have the same margins and padding. I want all the same CSS styles that are being applied with the header in my main. Now, before we go any further, parts of the course material or the website that you're building as a part of this course material requires you to put an image in your main. Use the previous grids and spacing, margins and padding lectures to create a space for your image and then make the image image fluid or uh, responsive. Now, in order to do that, go back to Bootstrap's uh, site, look up images. It'll give you a quick rundown of how you can do that. It's really not that complicated, um, and you'll sh you should be able to stick that in here. But for all intents and purposes, we're not going to really deal with that right now. What I want to deal with specifically is creating cards. Now, just like you saw in a previous uh, lecture that I that I talked about here, when it comes to grids. We're going to use the same grid structure so that our cards have a uh, sis, um, symmetric look across the page. We're going to make three cards in this case, all right? And I want all three cards to sit equidistant from each other without me having to create um, specific padding between them or specific margins between them using CSS. I want to use margins and padding as we've discussed in Bootstrap. So first things first, let's create a card. So if I want to create a, an actual card card, um, let's match or mirror what has already been implemented um, in this example card that we see in Bootstrap. Now, of course, you can create the first example card. That's the one we're creating in this course. But there's other cards you can create. You can create cards that don't have buttons at the bottom. You can create cards that are just list items or a group of things. Let me show you what I'm referring to while I'm speaking about it. You can do list groups where you have a group of items that display in a card format. You can have a group of items that display in a card format, but there's a featured item on top. I've used this before. Um, you can have the card footer be featured in the bottom of that list item. You can have what's called the kitchen sink, which is everything that a card can offer all in one kit, where you have the image cap at the top, the card body, which contains the title of the card under the image cap and the image uh, uh, content, as well as list items and, of course, links. And then lastly, we can do headers and footers, and, and we can really do a lot with cards that make the card... Uh, very UX UI friendly and can drive up the user acceptance of our website. Okay, but 
for all intents and purposes, we're just going to use the first card because that card is the most generic and the most widely used that I've seen. So because I want to maintain the same uh, grid pattern that we've spoken about in earlier course, early, early lectures, I'm going to create a div and I want this div to have a class of row. Now, as I develop, I go back and forth between my divs or my elements to ensure that the CSS styles match what I want. So what I like to do is go between the actual rendered page versus the code to see how it looks and to modify it as necessary or as needed. So the first thing I want to do is I want to actually create my first card. So I'm going to write a little comment, first card, so that it's evident that's what I'm doing. And then um, let's just make it. So. The first thing we want to do is create the div for the card and call it class card. The class card, the card class in Bootstrap will allow us to have all the styles that we want implemented into the card directly. If I want to override those styles, I can write style overrides. So as in the example, if I wanted to write an inline style, I can say style, you know, with 18 rim. Sorry. And this would apply to the entirety of the div, but we're not going to do that because we don't want to use rim or inline styles. What I actually want to do, my apologies, I clicked the wrong button. What I actually want to do is I want to use the sizing and the styles that we talked about in earlier courses. So I want to make this col three. Now, what is that going to do? Well, because there's 12 blocks in each row, right? If I say call three, then that means there'll be enough spacing between each of my three cards that those three cards will sit sim, you know, symbiotically next to each other and I will have space in between. I can say call four, it would maybe do the right thing. It, it, maybe, it might do that same thing or it might make the cards uh, rejig um, to the next row and I, I don't want that. So now what I wanna do is I wanna do some image, I wanna put an image cap on it and that requires me to say, to use the image tag. Now the image tag or the image element in um, HTML, HTML5, is just as simple as writing image like this. And there's certain attributes to your image element that are important to ensure that the image does what it's supposed to do. There are three specific attributes that we need to add to this image so that it does uh, operate in a way that we are happy. The first thing I wanna do is I wanna tell it where the image is. So in this case, we have an image um, called Mountain Path that I've already put inside, that I've already put inside this, um, inside my directory. So what I will do is I will say images, and then after I say images, I will say mountain, and it'll give me the mountain path. As IntelliSense, I'll press enter. The second attribute that's important, especially in Bootstrap, is the class that I want this to have and the class I want it to have is called card image top like I said that CSS class will contain all the styles that I would need to make sure that the image sits at the top of my card and I don't have to write specific styles or specific CSS styles to make sure that happens and then lastly for um, uh, accessibility we're gonna do alt so in this case I will say mountain image Great. The next thing I want to do is I want to init my card body. Now, cards can have card headers, card bodies, and card footers, but because I have the image as my header, I don't really need to make a header. So we're gonna forego that altogether, and we're just gonna say card body. So div, again, class, card body. All the styles I need are encapsulated in the class card body, and I can continue. So what's gonna be in my card body? Well, I need my title. So there are certain ways you can create titles in HTML5. They're called headers, all right? Now I know I already created something called a header here, but in HTML5, we have a specific um, element called H. And normally that H is accompanied by a, num a, a number, right? So if I said I wanted H1, this is the largest form factor or the largest font size um, of any header you can make out of the box from HTML5. 
So in this case, we're gonna follow the example and say card title. And then what I wanna do right now is I want to show you what this looks like right this very instant. So let's go to cards course. We still have our information from the last um, course lecture that we did, which was the nav bar. And as you can see, there's a card title here. I'm not a fan of certain things, right? First, first thing I see is it's really close to the nav bar. I don't like that too much. I also see that there's a padding around my image. I'm not a fan of that either. So there's a couple things I can do. I can, and, and what I wanna do before I do anything is I wanna test it to make sure it looks the way I want it to look. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go directly into the page. If you can't find where the HTML is for this specific part of your page, click the arrow and then scroll over it and it'll tell you what's going on, right? You can also click it. Once I click it, it takes me directly to that specific place in my in my code. This is the code that's sitting in your browser right now that's being rendered by the browser. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here to this, uh, this card and I'm gonna say, hey, you know what? I don't want you to be that close to, to the nav bar. So I want you to have a margin top of three. Now, three is the middle ground and let's find out what happens. Oh, look, it came down a little bit. You know what? Let's go a little further because that seems like it's still a little too close. So let's say margin top one. Oh, I went the other direction. Okay, I didn't like that. Let's go back this way. Let's say margin top five. Ah, good. There's enough space here. And once again, we're just playing with it. We're not necessarily making this our last um, iteration of what's going on. We're just playing around with it, seeing how it works for us and to make it work the way we want it to work, make it look the way we want it to look. This is a good enough spacing from the nav bar that I'm pretty much happy with how far away it is. Okay. The next thing I want to do is I want to make sure that my card, all right, and please understand this card is sitting in a row. If I have multiple cards in the row, I more than likely want to have those cards at the same margin from the top as this card. So instead of having margin top on this card directly, what I will do is I will take this and I will put that, oops, I will put that on the row. So it applies to all cards. So we'll say margin top five. Great, this, is, this looks good so far, but I still don't like the way this image is, you know, looking like it's not filling up the box. So let's find out why it's doing that. So if I look at the image itself, the image doesn't have any colors to the right or left, to the top or the bottom. That means that this image has no margins applied to it and no padding applied to it. That's very important because if the image did have margins and padding applied to it, I would try to remove that. But because the image has no orange or blue around the left, the right, the top or the bottom of the image, there's nothing to modify. So let's scroll over the card and see what's going on. Ah, the card has padding. Now you might be asking, how do I know that? Well, look at what I'm scrolling on. Okay, if I scroll off, you can see the card has a, board, a border, right? If I scroll into the actual edge of the border, it'll show me where that, what style per se is forcing that border to occur. Now, I still don't know why that is doing that. So what I want to do is I want to click on it. Now, once I click on it, I can look to the right and kind of gauge what's going on. Now, I'm going to save you the trouble of doing this because I'm going to let you know that this is padding that's forcing this inside of the card to have a buffer, okay? If this buffer was on the outside of the card, then I know it's a margin because margin's on the outside of the element. It forces the outside of the element to move away, right? But if it's on the inside of the element, meaning it's inside the card, like it is here, it's a padding issue. So if I wanna stop this padding issue from occurring, I need to tell this card to not have any internal padding. And so to do that, what I would say is, P padding zero. Now what this will do is it will force, and I did it on the wrong thing. No, I did it on the right thing, P zero. Now what this will do is this will force the entire card to have no padding on the left, on the right, on the top, or on the bottom, because P will affect all sides. And I'm saying zero, meaning I want no padding anywhere in the card. 
Let's see if it worked. And there you go. Padding went away. That's exactly what I want to see. There's one more thing I'm not necessarily a fan of. This car title is absolutely ginormous. It is huge. It's bigger than the nav bar uh, font. It's bigger than any other font. It's very obnoxious. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shrink it. Now, like I said before, H1 is the largest size. You can go all the way up to H6 or H5. I don't remember which one's the smallest. But in this case, we're going to use H5. Now, if I modify that here, you can see it got a lot smaller and it looks a lot easier. It's a lot easier to ingest. It's not as obnoxious. Because when I start adding text underneath it, I want that text to um, make sense from a uh, formatting perspective. All right, so there's one more thing I have to do. Now that my card looks good, I have my spacing that I want. Just because I added that stuff here doesn't mean that it's gonna stick. What I actually need to do is take all the things that I modified in the browser just now and apply it to the actual web page back in code because I didn't apply it to the code just yet. This is only gonna display for this session. Once I refresh this page, all of this goes away. I'll show you. It just went back to the way it was because we never told the server what changes we wanted. So let's do that. First things first, I want no margin. Well, mo no padding, sorry. Next thing is, I want there to be a margin top of five. And the last thing I did was I want to turn this into an H5. I'm going to save it. And now this should go back to the way it was when we formatted it in the browser. You can use the browser both in the styles category, the styles on this right, or the HTML in the middle to modify what it looks like in real time. So you don't have to go back to the code, refresh it, go back to the code, save, and then refresh, save, refresh. That's a pain in the butt. You can just do it directly in the page and then apply those styles that you like on the back end one time, and then you don't have to do it multiple times. All right, so let's finish out the card, okay? We have the actual uh, card title. Let's add some text. I know that the card has text that is built in. Listen, I'm old school. I um, If I don't have text, then I go to what's called the Lipsum generator and I grab the Lorem Ipsum uh, generated content. So I'm gonna generate uh, two, there we go. And all I'm gonna do is throw some Lorem Ipsum Delore in there. It's just a placeholder for, co for text so that you don't have to make it. Every web designer, web, web, web uh, author knows about it. And then let's add a button. Now, you can add an A tag and an anchor tag. So I just added two tags. Let's talk about those tags for a second. So in HTML, the P tag or the P element stands for paragraph. And basically, if you wanna write a paragraph of information in a way that is formatted from in paragraph style, you can use P to do that. For each new paragraph, you'll add a new P. Now, P contains the same attributes as image, except for source. So it contains the class, it contains ID, it contains most of the things you'll find in most of the, most of the HTML tags. A tag is also another HTML tag or an HTML element. And as we spoke about it in the nav bar before, the anchor tag is a link. Now, you can, in Bootstrap, you can use anchor tags as buttons and you can apply a uh, format or a class to that anchor tag to make it look like a button even though it's not a button. Now there's something very important that I'm about to show you. There are three different ways you can make a button in HTML. The first way is using an anchor tag and then styling the anchor tag to look like a button. Anchor tags are not buttons. Anchor tags are links. I want you to remember that. Yes, you can execute an anchor tag from the back end. You can click an anchor tag using jQuery. You can do a lot of things with anchor tags. They're very versatile. But please understand that anchor tags are not buttons. Anchor tags are anchor tags. Meaning, if I create an anchor tag like I did here, I have the ability to add an, a URL or a link to it. That can be an external link like google.com or an internal link to our directory or our website like index.html. Awesome. Well. The other way I can make a button, and firstly, let me show you how this button looks. So we'll use the hashtag or pound sign because I don't want to go anywhere with this, but I will use the same class for all three types of buttons, okay? But I want to show you what they look like. So the first button is an anchor. 
And this button is going to look like a button because I'm using a specific class called button or BTN. And then I'm adding another class. So I'm adding two classes to the same anchor tag button and then button primary. Button primary makes the color of the button blue. All right. If you want to see how there are other colors, that's just as easy as going into Bootstrap and asking Bootstrap specifically, hey, what are my specific colors that I can use? In this case, I'm using, um, like I said, I'm using button primary, but you can also use button danger for red, button success for green, yada, 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 yada. All right. These are your default buttons and you can use transparency and opacity in CSS as an inline style to modify the, the, the boldness of the color. So if you want it to be blue, but not as, 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 as um, hot, you can use opacity to kind of turn it down. We're not going to do that right now. We're going to use the default, the default color. So in this case, button primary, and then I'll say uh, anchor. Now I'm going to save it. And as you can see here, I have my uh, lipsum. I didn't put anything in the anchor tag, so let's put something there. I thought I did. I did. So let's do this, refresh, and there you go, anchor. This is an anchor tag. If I click it, it will execute the link. Now, I'm going to create another uh, button, or I'm sorry, card. But this time, I'm not going to use an anchor tag. I'm going to use an input. Now, you might be asking, well, what is that? Well, an input is a type of element in HTML5 that allows you to, that is very versatile, all right? Now, what's nice about inputs is that inputs can be used for daggone near anything. Let me change this out. Name this input. Let's say input. Now, what makes this input work is when I tell it what type of input I want it to be. Now, when I say type, do you see all of the input types that I could use? I can make, because the input's so versatile, inputs can be a checkbox, they can be a button, they can be a color, they can be a date time, um, they can be like a date time text box, uh, they can be a file upload, they can only allow email formatting, it could be a hidden input. There's so many different types of inputs. Inputs work like buttons in that the button will do what we ask it to do. The only difference between an input that is a type button and a button is that the input of type button will not execute a submit event by default. Now that's important. Right now we're not speaking about forms and how forms work, but inputs are very important because inputs are normally buttons or text boxes or whatever you want them to be that can be manipulated using jQuery, JavaScript, Angular, whatever. Now, that's not to say uh, anchor tags can't be implemented or manipulated using J JavaScript, and that's not saying buttons cannot be implemented using JavaScript, but all three have a specific purpose. Inputs are very versatile, and they can do a lot of things, and they have a lot of power. Please understand that if I click this input, it will literally do the same thing that the anchor tag does, nothing, because there's no action behind it. So let's save this, and let's look. Ah, look at that. It's on the outside. I forgot that inputs don't allow you to put the value of the button or the value of the element in the quotations or inside the uh, brackets. You actually have to say value. And the value equals input. Now here's a problem between these two cards. They're really close together. So what I need to do is I need to make them equidistant from each other. In order to do that, I want to go into each card and I want to say margin left, right equals auto. And I'm going to do the same thing for the second one as well. And what that will do is that I'll make the, the cards equidistant from each other in a way that looks very um, pretty. And there you go. The cards are equidistant from each other because I said I want the margin on the left and the right of each card to be auto or 50% on both sides. Let's add our third and final card. So the anchor tag goes nowhere. You see how it has the hash, it added the pound sign or hashtag at the end of the URL. 
The input's not going to do anything because, like I said, the input's not a button. It looks like a button. It can be... F uh, you can add an event listener behind it using JavaScript to make it function like a button and to do certain things like go to another web page, execute some code, do a mathematical expression, whatever. But the input has no code behind it, right? It's just a very versatile HTML element that allows us to do different things. Now, what I want to do is I want to add one more card. Notice I'm just copying and pasting the next card. There's no magic to it. Once you write the first card and you get that working, you can copy and paste it as many times as you want and use it over and over again. This is the beauty of Bootstrap. All right, I have my card, and now I'm going to modify this. I don't want it to be an input anymore. I want to use a good old-fashioned button. Now, with a button, there's not a lot you have to do because it's already a button. It already knows what it has to do. We're going to make it button primary again so they all look the same so you can see that they're all, you know, equal. I'm going to make this mistake one more time and see if it is actually a mistake or if it's going to work. All right, cool. It did work. And once again, look, they're all equidistant from each other. Almost they look centered, right? That's because you said margin X, which is left, right is auto. I keep saying that over and over again. So you guys get it in your minds. It's margin X auto. That's forcing all of these cars to sit in a symbiotic relationship equidistant from each other so that they're not overriding one another or they're co uh, colliding with each other. Okay, let's do something really fast. I'm gonna click the anchor tag again. Notice that it did, it went to the top of the page because it's doing the pound sign, right? The hashtag, great. I click the input and nothing happens, right? I can go to the console, I'll show you there's nothing happening here. Everything is, is Gucci, everything's great. I'm gonna click the button and something interesting is gonna happen. Nothing. Now the reason why the button isn't doing anything is because the default, the default in HTML5, the default value of the button when it's clicked is to submit the page and or form. But this page has no form. We did not add a form tag or element to the page and thus there's nothing to submit and therefore the button will not fire. Now once again, you can use this button in another, in another, uh, you can tell the button to do certain things by giving it an ID and calling it on the JavaScript side. If I said type equals, I can say submit. I can force it to submit. I can force it to open up a menu. I can force it to reset the form. In this case, if I say type submit, I come back in here, I refresh the page. Everything looks the same. It doesn't look like anything changed, right? Wrong. Wrong again. Because when I click this button, let me see if it has the type on it. The submit is firing. But once again, like I said before, there's no form to submit, so the page does nothing. This is my, uh, towards the end, this is the end of the class so far when it comes to cards. I want to say cards are not as hard as they look. They're not as, they're not as cumbersome once you get into the nuts and bolts of the things that happen within the card. But as I say in all my classes, I hope you guys are having a good time and you're learning something. So, good luck. Have fun. Ciao.